Welcome back YouTube. Today's flavor of the day is gas shock absorbers. I got a set of four here from the snowmobile. We're going to do a rebuild on these. New oil, new nitrogen gas, and a cleanup, and uh, the way we go back on the snow. How do you know when your shocks are gone? When you can do this with them. They're pretty much gone. So we'll go through this set, uh, do a rebuild, and get our customer happy. So first things first with these shocks, you want to get rid of the nitrogen gas pressure. Some of them carry up to 200 pounds of pressure. If you take off this end of it, or the upper end, and uh, don't leave the gas pressure first, you're going to know it. It's a small fitting at the bottom for filling it. Unscrew it. Wait for the pressure to bleed off. Shouldn't take too, too long. You can check by pushing down on the shaft. If, if, it, if the shaft rebounds, you know you don't have the gas pressure off. If, the, if any oil comes out the bottom, you have uh, an, a damaged internal floating piston need to be replaced. Now you can remove your top with the appropriate wrench. Have a look for oil coming out because resi residual gas pressure can still make a bit of oil come out of here. Then you pull out your piston assembly slowly. You don't want oil going everywhere. We'll have a look at this in more detail a little bit later on. Have a look at your oil coming out. If you see water or white, it means there's water in it. So something has been leaking. Oh, we got company. So our next step is to get our floating piston out of the shock. A uh, bit of compressed air is good. Use a rag over the top to protect your hands. And give it a little bit of air. So we do an inspection and clean up on this, inspect our O-rings for cuts or nicks. Generally if the oil and the uh, gas and the shock stayed separate, the O-ring is usually in pretty good shape. Just do a clean up and rebuild with fresh oil and you're fine. Next we'll do disassembly on the piston assembly. So here's our components of our uh, shock piston. Uh, all on the bottom, that will be our compression stack, it's closest to the uh, head of the shock. Uh, we have our internal piston here with our orifices and our, our rebound stack on the back. And this is followed up with some nuts and washers to keep it all stacked. So we'll clean it all, inspect for cracks and rust, and uh, reassemble the shock. So first thing in the rebuild, now we need to set our uh, internal floating piston depth. Lubricate the o-ring a bit. And these specs on these piston depths can be found on the internet in lots of places actually these days. So we get it started past the edge. Then we'll set a scale to our 7.3 inches for this particular shock. And we'll drop it down until it, until it touches our shock body. Best thing to do now is reinstall our valve that holds some air pressure in the bottom so that when we insert the piston rod we don't displace our piston from its spec. shock oil up to the threads and there's not going to be enough in this bottle
Next we need to take our piston assembly and get it down in the oil. We're going to have some overflow because that's the type of shock this is. Wrap a rag around to catch the excess. Then we have to bleed the air out of the piston assembly. By moving it up and down very gently actually so we don't displace our internal piston. Next we need to get the cap on without leaving any air in the, in the shock body but the piston has to be all the way up. And it's an overflow design so that oil will bypass the threads until the o-ring makes contact with the body. So as you push it in you're going to get an overflow but you have to keep your shock extended at the same time. Once your o-ring makes contact you're pretty good. Just left to tighten it up. Now it's a big wrench but you don't need a lot of torque on this thing. I get a few every year and it seems like somebody put them on there with a piece of pipe on the big wrench. We clean off our shock body. And we check it for travel. Don't pull fast. If you do, you'll cavitate and create air bubbles in your oil again. You just run it through its stroke slowly. Make sure you don't have any air in there because you'll hear it. Okay, so that's ready for gas pressure. So, our nitrogen gas is injected by a needle uh, with a small socket down here. So we get our needle through the rubber plug, then we slowly add gas up to the 200 pound spec for this particular shock. You'll notice the shaft starting to rise on its way in with the addition of pressure. So there's our 200. We'll sit and wait for the shaft to fully extend and for the pressure to stabilize. Shut off our bottle, release our regulator, and we draw the needle. That part's pretty easy. Replace our screw that protects our rubber seat. take our shaft for test ride. If we compress it manually we should see it come back. It should extend on its own and no noises of air inside the uh, fluid. Piece of cake. Three more to go. So during our disassembly of one of the shocks we found a uh, floating piston that is actually cracked through the back side from impact from the piston. That's what happens when you run out of oil and there's still gas pressure in it. So we're going to make him up a new one because he wants his sled on the go as soon as possible as opposed to waiting for ordering parts. So this thing is just a hair under, uh, well it's, it's 1 4 12. It's a hair under half an inch and about 592 thick. So we're going to get set up and uh, cut him a new piston. Four 
470. back here a bit. We're going to do a center drill and uh, hold this with a center because we have to plunge cut a deep groove for the o-ring and uh, so we'll do that part first before we go and uh, finish the end of it. center set up. So off camera I did a quick grind on a radius tool bit to fit our o-ring groove here. We're going to plunge cut this one into the piston before we uh, finish the end and part it off. This is a non-critical dimension. We can scale it off. Uh, all it really needs to do is separate our oil on this side from our gas on this side. Uh, it's coming out to be center of the groove is roughly 7 sixteenths so we'll scale this one out and uh, get our groove done we're also going to turn this at a fairly low speed we'll try 300 see how it works out so after measuring up our, uh, our original part uh, our open groove is going to be 160 thou depth, uh, depth of cut so we get set up and get that done. have a measure.
our setup. Now and get to our final dimension. Next thing we need now is a uh, 0.9 diameter hole to a depth of four thirty. So we'll get set up to do that. So this piece was supposed to be 440 deep by 900 diameter. What do you think? I said a deep 440. I'm blaming the camera, that's why. I'm just going to redo this piece. I'll show you the end result when I get it done. Alrighty, so here are our cracked original and our replacement part. We'll uh, we get our shock reassembled, bring it, send it off to our customer, you'll be a happy guy. So we've got our set of four shocks completed, uh, recharged with nitrogen and uh, leak tested with soapy water. Uh, should be good to go for our customer. Thanks for watching again.